I'm at the Berlin office of Otto Bock, the German prosthetics maker. I'm about to test one of the latest technologies, exoskeletons. Otto Bock was founded in 1919 to make artificial limbs after World War I. Today, it's one of the world's biggest prosthetics makers and it recently expanded into exoskeletons for manufacturing. Companies like Daimler, Toyota and Airbus are already working with exoskeletons. Ottobock is confident that sales will be growing and that exoskeletons will take on a wider role in manufacturing. So I'm wearing the exoskeleton of Ottobock and it's a very, very interesting feeling. If I lift my arms, it almost happens automatically. It feels like I'm floating in water and uh, my shoulders are supported uh, for any type of overhead work that a factory worker would usually do. They have some stations here where I can test this. Uh, here's a keychain exercise that I will try to do now. Uh, it's an overhead work that simulates stuff that factories workers do uh, in the car plant or wherever they may work. So forgive my clumsiness, but what I can say is that lifting my arms and, and working overhead was no issue at all. It felt fine. Uh, there was no strain on my shoulder and it almost felt like you know somebody was helping me doing this job. I mean, this is the origin of what we do um, in the exoskeleton sphere. We started this with Volkswagen when they asked us to find a solution for the aging workforces. And uh, the key challenge was to find a solution for the shoulder and of course the exhaustion that comes with overhead work, working under a car body at the assembly line. So this, if I can show this here, I mean the, the, the arm's weight is around 4 kilo, what we see here. And this causes already a big, big sort of strain on your joint when you have your arms up. And the idea is to take this weight off here, under the arm, and basically transfer it behind your back into the hip. Um, what, what's the price of, of this product? If, um, if I'm a company, you know, buying this for my factory worker, how much would it cost? Yeah, that usually depends also what you want to include service-wise, but we are somewhere in the range of four to five thousand euros. Exoskeletons, at least the bigger ones, are still somewhat expensive. But Ottobuck argues that getting one is already paying off for workers. So the business case is already very attractive. Um, and the prices are actually not the, the principal concern. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a growing uh, technology uh, that finds more and more users. Um, the key here is the perception of the workers. Um, you know, that, that this is getting more normal. I think that's the key to uh, further help this uh, segment grow. Yeah, return on investment, a little over a year you mentioned. Um, how does that work? Is it the lack of absentee time? Uh, is it uh, you know reduced uh, um, healthcare costs? What, what, how do you calculate that one? Right. I mean, let me give you one example of uh, Toyota in North America. Um, they deploy this exoskeleton as a standard PPE, personal protective equipment, and they have typically shoulder injury cost at at a line uh, in one of their plants of a quarter of a million dollars. And with the help of this exoskeleton, they could eliminate this to zero um, dollars a year. Especially for logistics workers, exoskeletons could make their work life easier. In an average work week, a parcel center worker lifts the weight of a jumbo jet, a 747. So relieving some of that strain with exoskeletons could go a long way. And turn all the way to you. Exactly. Until you cannot go further anymore. So now I'm wearing the exoskeleton for the back. This is designed for logistics center workers, people that lift heavy stuff and it relieves pressure on the lower back and it helps workers carry stuff safely. The, the load goes in here, basically, and then um, goes in behind your back, and we return a little bit, um, across, you know, behind your back, and then into the structure, and into the leg. And the question now is, and how do you get the energy? When you bend forward, uh, the energy harvesting system in here stores the energy when you bend, 
and then you stand up again, basically releases the energy. And the effect is that um, the, the load on your disks is at this five kilo weight, it's basically eliminated. How much success do you have in convincing some of the big logistics players, Amazon comes to mind, DHL comes to mind, in, in you know, outfitting some of their parcel center workers with, with uh, you know, exoskeletons like that? At, at the moment we have huge demand coming from those leading um, logistics companies because they see that uh, they have to react um, to the perception of their work environment and they uh, really like um, to offer workers an innovative approach to lifting, to doing those heavy jobs. Um, how many exoskeletons have you sold or leased so far? I can share with you the number of uh, customer sites that we have deployed those products to. Those are counting at the moment at 1,500 worldwide. So what I'm wearing now is the smallest exoskeleton in the world and it's a, an exoskeleton for your thumb. And uh, factory workers often put stuff in openings and this helps uh, workers do that and it protects uh, their joints in the hand. Um, and the way it works, it's, um, it basically protects the tip, which is the simple part. And the, the intelligent part is that I put this buckle um, on top of my index and when I push, and this, this load doesn't go into this joint anymore, but it's transferred into the full arm. Where do you see exoskeletons in the future of Autobock? In the future, I think, for exoskeletons uh, look, look very bright. The, the trends, like um, aging workforces working for us. You know, fully automated factories are still something, um, you know, part of science fiction. The future will also bring, um, um, like, mind control exoskeletons. Because when you look at our robotic hands in yes. the prosthetics field, we see already electrodes that are reading the mind, basically our will, um, about moving our extremities. And if you put this together with exoskeleton in the future, make this sort of scalable uh, as a mass technology. This is how we move. I'm Stefan Nicola. For more content like this, follow us on your favorite platforms.